Today we're gonna to continue our decentralized science track. So some of you guys might be curious, why AI and crypto, or where does data storage fall in, in decentralized science? And so I, I hope I can bridge a little bit of those two worlds in my talk today. So I do wanna address the elephant in the room. I know some of you guys might already come from crypto background, some of you guys might be skeptical about crypto, some of you guys might be skeptical of AI, right? Because both fields have been around for a very long time. And a question I get very often is, is it just hype? Are there actually really good use cases out there? Or is it just another buzzword that we're hearing um, in the technology uh, cycle where investment dollars are going into this, this, these two fields? So um, one thing that uh, I wanted to start with is the reason why decentralized storage is so important is because there is a lot of risk around centralization of AI. And some of you guys may have already seen this in the mainstream news, um, in today's version of the web. Many of you guys may or may not know this, but four companies really own ma the, the majority of the data on the web today. And a lot of AI models that we use day to day crawl the web that belong in the hands of monopoly. And so uh, for us at the Filecoin Foundation and also for all the builders in our ecosystem, this is really the big problem we hope to address is really this bigger issue of how do we reduce monopoly on the web and make sure that people can access the best kind of data from anywhere um, without necessarily monopoly control. And one thing that people often think about when they think about AI risks is they don't trust AI. They, they don't trust where the data is coming from. On the flip side, people who work in crypto, a lot of buzzwords that people use are trust, verification, and so you, know, you can imagine a perfect pairing of these two worlds coming together when we think about decentralizing AI. Um, if you look behind me, there's a few articles um, around just the amount of big tech dollars that have gone into investing in the top AI companies we see today. There's companies like Anthropic, where Amazon put in $2.75 billion. In fact, many people cite that big tech has invested more in AI companies than most venture capital firms. So this is really you know, a little scary because they already control most of the data and now they're gonna really fully control the web. And like I mentioned before, data really is the fuel of AI. So it really determines where data originates, how and where data is stored, who can access data in the long term. There have been a lot of people who have built businesses on the web today where they've gone through data blackout periods because um, a company like a Meta or Facebook or Instagram, they, they suddenly go down for hours and all the users using it just can't access their data. And so um, if you look behind me, um, I, I did wanna give a bit of an introduction for those that may not be as familiar with how AI works at the fundamental level. Um, there's really three layers to think about. There is the infrastructure layer, so that might be GPUs, that might be how data is stored. Uh, there is also the model layer, so you can see in the middle, that might include tooling and foundational models. Many of you guys might have heard of OpenAI or Anthropic uh, at that layer. And then there's application layer, which is really how day-to-day -day users are able to actually interact with AI today. So if you wanted to build a bot that helps you track when to invest in meme coins, you can build an application at the application layer. Or you can do something more useful, like have a chat GPT interface. If you look at the hardware layer today, um, NVIDIA stock has gone up a lot the last few years, and that's because they have a monopoly on GPUs. In Web3, there's a number of companies really thinking about decentralizing compute, from Akash to Render to IO.net uh, to BitDeer. So we're already seeing a lot of groups today saying we don't want hardware to necessarily belong in just the hands of one company. We think that a network of GPUs is better. And similarly, uh, for Filecoin, we are trying to do that at the data layer. So very similar to AWS, Azure, Google Cloud today that dominate cloud storage. We're looking at a decentralized storage network that we've been building for over the last decade to really allow people to store their data in data sets, all, in, in data centers all around the world. 
We also have um, a number of other Web3 companies that are thinking about decentralization at other levels from decentralized training. The dominant players are BitTensor and Jensen. There's decentralized inference, which really means how you take models and you make inferences from there. And there's Ritual and Modulus in that layer. There's a ton of more companies that I'm probably missing. And then at the very top application layer, one, one, one theme I've heard this week especially is people have brought up AI agents a lot. So um, there is um, Theric, I can talk about more that we're doing work with, but there's a ton of other companies really thinking at the AI agent layer. But for us, the data layer is, in my opinion, the most important because the big elephant in the room that's often asked is how can you verify and trust AI? And I think decentralized storage really offers that great opportunity. So um, this is just a brief overview of the Filecoin network. Filecoin is a decentralized storage network. We have over 3,200 independent entrepreneurs around the world, much like an Airbnb network, running their own data centers. And we have um, tons of exabytes of data and tons of smart contracts deployed. So um, you can just see the latest of our statistics here. We store all kinds of data sets. Um, for those that might be more in the uh, science realm, um, we have stored a ton of data sets from NASA, from UC Berkeley, from MIT. If you use MIT Open Learning, a lot of that courseware is all stored on Filecoin. So we actually have really good use cases in academia because right now we're, we're most optimized for institutions and groups that have huge amounts of data sets that otherwise would be very unaffordable to store. Um, I know many of you guys, if you work in any kind of neuroscience lab or somewhere else, you, you might actually spend hundreds of thousands of dollars per month just on storage alone. And so for us, we really want to make sure that we can not only have data that isn't owned by Monopoly, but also is affordable, that really can help accelerate everyone's respective fields. Uh, there are a lot of advantages for Filecoin and AI. Um, the number one thing I just mentioned is really scale and cost. Uh, we are really good for storing large data sets that you may or may not have to access that frequency, and we are at a cost point much lower than traditional storage providers um, like an AWS when it comes to those use cases. We have trust in proof of storage, and so we are able to actually not only store but also verify that a data set was stored at a point in time and that you can look at alterations over time. And then you also have res resilience to monopoly ownership. So if I am a dictator in a country and I want to shut down the internet, when you think about having a decentralized storage network, you can really preserve critical information that might be important to a democracy. And we've seen this use case used in human rights instances like in Ukraine, when um, the war first broke out, we worked with a bunch of human rights groups and journalists to make sure that the on-the-ground footage can be verified using Filecoin and IPFS, and that it can be one day be admissible in international criminal court. So people can make sure that those photos weren't docked, they, weren't docked, they were uh, actually coming from the source of journalists. The other thing that I don't know if many people in the room know, but today um, a lot of AI use cases produce an enormous amount of data. In fact, 90% of the world's data was just created in the last two years alone. And by 2025, um, it's predicted that there's going to be 463 exabytes of data created each day. If you look to my left, this might look familiar. In San Francisco, these cars are everywhere, but each one of these self-driving cars produce around 1.4 terabytes of data an hour. And now imagine if the self-driving car were to hit a pedestrian, or if there's any kind of public safety incident, that data does have to be stored and verified somewhere. So this is really the, the reality we're looking at today already with uh, the enormous amount of data AI consumes. And Filecoin is really built to scale with AI data. So we uh, have been a leader specifically in the Web3 world. We are the largest decentralized storage network out there. And we have a capacity of 6.2 exabytes of data. And so we're still growing, um, but we have data centers, like I mentioned, all over the world. And we store all kinds of uh, data, including um, models that a lot of AI companies today run off of. This is an area that I started with, which is 
the trust and confidence in AI is wavering. Um, in according to a few surveys, 61% uh, of people are actually worried about using AI. And actually, only one in two believe that the benefits of AI uh, outweigh the risks. Um, I'm definitely a techno optimist. I think AI has a lot of good in the world, but we, we want to make sure we can actually verify that the data that it's pulled from um, is coming from trustworthy sources. And so one of the areas I mentioned earlier is the ability of Filecoin to do proof of storage, to really prove that a data is stored correctly and being able to transparently preserve a proven record um, of data integrity. So you can see on the right uh, a little bit more about the war crime um, pilot we did in uh, Ukraine with a number of human rights groups. Um, transparency, transparency, authentication, and provenance is also really, really important here. Um, I think I already talked about this earlier, but making sure that we can combat bias and ensure that data sets are able to be audited. There's a lot of properties with on-chain data that make it very transparent for everyone to see changes over time. Um, and then finally, resistance to monopoly uh, data ownership. So I mentioned earlier, a lot of monopolies around the world, dictatorships, have sometimes shut down the web or censored uh, certain websites because they don't want people to see certain information. Uh, that is the brilliance of a decentralized storage network is we can really make sure the most critical information on the web can be accessible by everyone. Um, in addition, we also wanna make sure that um, big tech isn't necessarily doubling the price of storage costs today that make it really hard for entrepreneurs to be able to build new companies and build new products. So here are a couple of examples of the incredible ecosystem of entrepreneurs building on the Filecoin network, uh, leveraging AI. Uh, we, we saw um, Vitaly earlier talk about the use case in robotics. He actually went through the Filecoin Techstars Accelerator. So it's really wonderful seeing the enormous amount of brilliant people uh, really thinking about leveraging the centralized storage. Um, there's also Equity Labs, which actually uh, has created a uh, AI model for bringing trust and transparency to climate data. Today, you can imagine when you think about climate change, it's pretty controversial data on the web because some people might have certain conspiracy theories today on it. And so um, Equity Labs is really making sure that data sets for climate is coming from trustworthy, reputable scientific sources and second, that it's stored in a decentralized way. This year, we're also facing the record number of elections around the world, the most ever in time. And a lot of people today are also wavering in their trust in outcomes in the election process. And Numbers Protocol is an incredible company that has been working with different governments around the world, first in Taiwan and now in Kenya, to really think about how to make sure that information around elections is stored in a trustworthy way. And they're also uh, creating AI-generated content um, where you can actually verify that it's coming from that source. And then finally, we have storage providers like Seal Storage that have been collaborating on a ton of interesting AI data integrity work. I also wanted to talk about compute because compute is really important. We work with a lot of different compute partners um, to make decentralized storage uh, possible. Like I said, um, there's a lot of companies today thinking about how to also decentralize at the GPU side so that there isn't just a hardware monopoly um, when it comes to ownership of, of these systems. And we have a lot of really amazing companies also building on the Filecoin ecosystem from Bacalao, um, which is really looking at a cost-efficient and secure way of running jobs for, for big data. Um, we have Fluence Labs, uh, which is really thinking about a decentralized serverless cloud computing platform. And then Web3 Mine, um, where they're really looking at coordinating hardware and capital. A couple of quotes here, um, I won't bore you guys, but you can see like a few people um, who really talk about just the importance of decentralized storage today. At the end of the day, infrastructure is going to be key for how AI models run and how AI applications run. Um, and a lot of these people really do want that transparency. They want that fairness. Um, they want to make sure that there is a storage solution out there that really uh, can be something that people can trust. So um, I wanted to leave more time for questions. I've left my information here, but 
Thank you so much, everyone, for having me.